Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Mac if you're new here and today I'm going to be showing you the entire step-by-step -step process on how you can create and sell notebooks like these on Etsy. If you're new to my channel, my name is Mac. I post videos weekly going over different passive incomes, side hustles, lots to do with Etsy selling and so much more. So if that interests you, be sure to subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss out on future videos. I'm going to break this video down in a few different steps. I'm going to teach you how to research what kind of notebooks we should be selling. I'm then going to show you how to design the notebook and being sure that we are following all of our policies and we are not infringing on any copyright. Then I'm going to show you how we're going to actually create that notebook and list it on our Etsy shop. Now we are doing this with the print on demand method today. If you're unfamiliar with print on demand, I do have a free course, a guide, and a bunch of different other resources on this channel. I'll link everything below if you do want more information on the process of print on demand. But basically to give you a little bit of a rundown, if you are new, all of the products that we're going to be creating are going to be print, packed, and shipped for us. We're just building the product mock-up and actually creating it digitally. And then when it makes a sale, we're going to have a print provider actually physically create that product and ship it out for us. So this entire process calls for no shipping on your end and everything is done virtually and you can do this from anywhere. So I'm going to head over to my laptop and we're going to get right into the entire process. Before we go ahead and and start creating our journal, we do want to figure out what kind of notebook or journal we want to design. Now, because the product is going to be printed for us, we're only designing the outside of the journal or notebook. So we only need to create the cover design, but I do want to go ahead and do some research to see what's already selling and to see where we could fit in our product to help us get a sale. So I'm going to head over to Etsy and I am just going to type the word journal. Now, as I can see here, up at the top, this is showing that there are 1.3 million results for journal. So that's a lot. We don't want to go up against 1.3 million listings, and that's honestly probably a fraction of it. So what we're going to do is kind of scroll down and see what these are saying. So some of these are digital. I'm seeing mental health journal, gratitude journal, wellness journal and manifestation journal. So those are just a few different um, keywords to add to that. And that's also niching down a little bit. So next I'm gonna type in one of those words to see how many search results we're gonna get with that. So meditation journal. Okay, now this has only 8,000 results. So see how we just limited that search so much. We have way better of a chance getting a sale against 8,000 listings than going up against 1.3 million. So something to keep in mind here, that is a great way to just check that out and do some research. So I'm going to take this a step further with my research and just get an idea for how these are doing. So I am using two different Chrome extensions for this. I am using Everbee and I'm also using Sale Samurai. Both of those will be linked for you in the description below, um, but just heads up that that's what I'm using to get these spying results and it is really great and I highly recommend it. So what I'm going to do is select this listing and hit analyze. And over here, it's going to show me how much this journal has made so far. So they make about $200 a month selling this journal. So that tells me that people are buying it. Um, and it has a lot of favorites too, and they've sold 300 of them. Um, and so yeah, people, people like this journal, people want this journal. Um, now ours is going to be a little bit different. It's more of a notebook. It's not exactly, you know, a medium content book, it's going to be considered a low content book. So that's something to keep in mind too. So I am going to go ahead and do a manifestation journal. So that is going to be, you know, my long tail keyword. And that's also going to be the product that I'm creating. So now we know what we're creating. Next is we need to create the design for it. Now, before I head into Canva, that is where I'm going to be creating this. I am going to head to Printify first, and I'm going to get the dimensions for the design on the product that I'm creating. This is really important because that way you're creating the correct size file and it's going to upload and be high quality. So definitely recommend doing this before you start designing so that you don't have to resize it and things get messed up later. So I'm going to go and type journal 
and we're gonna see what comes up. So we have a few different journal um, options here. We have a spiral notebook, journals, um, then we have like more of like classic stuff. I'm also keeping in mind the price here. I'm gonna just go with this journal here, a hardcover um, mat journal. So then I'm just gonna click start designing and this is where I'm going to get my dimensions. Here it says print area size 4065 by 2850 um, pixels. So that's the size I'm gonna create my artboard in Canva. So then I'm gonna head to Canva, create a design, gonna go to custom size and then I'm just going to copy and paste those sizes into um, Canva so that I create my artboard. All right, so now we have our artboard fit exactly to the dimensions that we're gonna be uploading into that product on Printify. So we don't have to worry about what exactly, it's it's not gonna get messed up. Um, another thing when you're designing covers to items, we need to remember there is a front and a back. So I am gonna draw a line down the middle here just so that I have an idea of where my front and back cover is so that I don't get anything messed up here. So the right side would be my front cover and the left would be the back. So think of how a book folds. You do wanna keep that in mind so that you're not creating anything backwards. So the vision I have in my head is something with an ombre background and then maybe like some gold text on here. So what I'm gonna do to avoid any copyright issues with Canva, I'm gonna head over to Creative Fabrica. If you're not familiar with Creative Fabrica, it is a online seller's best friend, especially if you are selling print-on-demand products like this, digital products, even if you want to elevate your social media, they have so many amazing things to use and you can see what license is coming with the graphics and fonts that you're getting. So I find this to be something so useful, so helpful. I do have a link for you in the description below. Highly recommend trying them out. And again, you're making sure that we're avoiding any copyright issues by using Creative Fabrica. So I typed in the word gradient background because I want to look for a nice gradient to use. And I'm seeing this gorgeous aura love gradient background. And that is exactly what I am looking for here. So I am going to download it directly to my computer. It's gonna show up right at the bottom here. I'm gonna head back over to Canva and I've unzipped that file that I just grabbed and downloaded from Creative Fabrica. And we know we have the license, so it's it's perfect, it's ready to go. And I'm just going to see which one of these I wanna use and I'm gonna drag and drop that directly into my artboard. So now I have this here where I can kind of stretch it and you know, mess with it a little bit. So that's kind of how I'm going to get my cover. And then I'm just gonna send that to the back so that I can keep in reference where my line is for my front and the cover of my book. And then I'm gonna go back over to Creative Fabrica and then I'm gonna look for a font because again, with the fonts, we wanna make sure that we have um, the usage rights to it. So as you can see here, they have so many different types of fonts to choose from. This is absolutely amazing. I found this font here that I wanna use and I'm going to go ahead and do the same process of downloading that, unzipping the file, and then we're gonna upload it directly into our Canva artboard. To upload a font into Canva, all you have to do is create a text box, head up to where it's showing you what font is currently being used, then we're gonna select upload a font and then we're gonna find the one that we just downloaded from Creative Fabrica. So we now have that font directly in here for us to access under my fonts. Okay, so as you can see, we have this nice manifestation font going on. So I'm just gonna go ahead and create my design in here. I'm gonna speed this process up so that we can get moving on to our next step. So as you can see here, I've went ahead and created my cover for the front and back. So now that I'm finished here, I am gonna delete that line in the middle because that will show up. Anything that is shown here is gonna be printed on the actual journal. So we wanna make sure that everything lines up and is good. So then I'm just gonna download this. We don't need to mess with the size anymore because we already sized it. I'm going to hit download and then I'm going to head over to Printify. Now, something to keep in mind here is you do need to have an Etsy shop synced up to your Printify store in order to do the next step. So I am going to link a video for you below where I show you the step-by-step -step process on exactly how to do this. So you can reference that video if you've never done that before. It will be really helpful to you. So now I'm going to hit start designing again and I'm going to drag and drop that image that I just created in Canva into my artboard. 
cardboard. Now, as you can see here, it is filling the full space, but I am gonna make it slightly smaller so that I can get it lined up correctly and to the way that I want it. If you look close here, there are some dotted lines that we need to be staying inside of. So I'm just kind of taking note of that and adjusting as I need to. You may need to go back and forth a little bit and adjust this to get it absolutely perfect. Something else to keep in mind too is Printify offers this to be different colored backgrounds, which is pretty cool here. So if that is something that you wanted to try out, you absolutely could. Once I have that lined up, I'm going to go ahead and hit preview. And this is going to give me a mock-up of what my journal is going to look like when someone buys it and Printify prints it and ships it for me. So this is stunning. I think it looks great. Um, and then it's also showing me the inside of the journal as well. And what's awesome about Printify is they're going to actually give us all these mock-up photos to use on our Etsy store, but I am gonna give you a bonus tip on how to get additional mock-ups in just a moment. So once this looks good, everything is lined up. Again, we wanna take our time making sure that this looks exactly the way that we want it to because it is gonna get printed like this. If you mess up something, it will still get printed. So please, please, please make sure that you do everything nice and centered. So I'm gonna hit save product. And now it's gonna bring me to the process where I am going to list this on my Etsy shop. Now, something that's really key here is going to be the SEO that we use in our title. Now, we wanna make sure we're using keywords that are being searched for, for the product that we are selling so that we can have a better chance of being put in front of the right customer and actually get a sale for this product. So I am going to leave a tutorial going over how I do that in the description here. So I like to use an extension like like sales samurai to get my keywords so this is giving some pretty good results here overall but as you can see here on the right side it's giving me tags that i can use in my etsy listing and it's also giving me a bunch of long tail keywords that are working already and it just shows all of those search results so that's how i'm going to go ahead and curate my title so for my description as well, I'm gonna do something similar. I'm gonna curate a nice description that says what the product is, and I'm also going to trickle in some of those keywords there as well. So once I have a brief description there, I am going to head down to my pricing. So keep in mind with print on demand, we do have to pay the print provider to print this for us. So that is going to cut into our profit margin. As you can see here, the production cost is $8.88. So that is how much we have to pay Printify to create that product. So we obviously need to charge more and consider our shipping price so that we can make sure that we're making a profit. So we need to make sure that we're charging more than $12 in order to make a profit on this journal. So I'm gonna head back over to Etsy and do a little bit of research to see what other journals um, price points are and just kind of get a feel for what exactly the market is paying and currently will pay for something like this. So a lot of the journals are around $18. I think that is a pretty good price. The recommended retail price is 14, but then we're not really gonna make much of a profit. So I'm gonna change the price of the journal to $18. That way I'm hiding the shipping cost in my actual price. So I can charge free shipping to the customer, but they are still paying for that shipping. They just don't feel like they are and they're not selecting an additional cost for that shipping. So once my listing is ready to go, all I have to do is hit publish. And because my store is synced, that's gonna go directly over to my Etsy shop where I can then further edit it and publish it so it can be live on an Etsy store. Now, like I had mentioned before, I do wanna get some mock-ups to really make sure that my Etsy listing stands out against the competition. And there are a few different ways that you can go about doing that. You can use Canva and import different mock-up photos from Creative Fabrica. They have great mock-ups that always do really well for me. I'm gonna leave a video in the description that will show you exactly how to get mock-ups and a bunch of different options that you have. So I'll leave that for you below so that you can reference that video when creating your mock-ups. So now we have that listing ready to go. And now this is synced so that when someone does order this item, it's going to send that order directly to Printify along with the customer's shipping information and everything. So it makes it passive and you don't have to manually enter those orders. So really great, really cool. It's important to have your shop synced correctly. In this video, we went over how to research what kind of products to sell. We also went over the process of creating our design Design and then uploading it onto our Printify product and then listing it on our Etsy shop. Now keep in mind that this
this is not a one and done. We do want to continue listing and being consistent in our shop. So you want to just rinse and repeat this process that I just showed you for multiple products on your store. And I do recommend keeping your store dedicated towards a niche or products that do make sense for what you're selling. All of my helpful videos that can help you further along with this process will be linked below. If you found this video helpful, please go ahead and leave a like or a comment. This helps me know that this is the content that you like to see. And if you're not subscribed, don't forget to and put on your notifications so you don't miss out on any future videos. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.